Hello, hello. We are live and I am so excited to have Nina Caputi here with me. She is an amazing woman doing amazing things and I can't wait to talk to her about connecting, making connections, using LinkedIn, which is something that she has learned to do well. And I just want to, I see a few people have joined. So I just want to check in to make sure everybody can hear me. So um, if you can hear me, type where you are joining from. All right. So I'm going to jump in and I'm going to introduce myself. I am Patricia Brooks and I help single women who are ready to start the next chapter of their lives living in a foreign country, but who feel like they don't have the confidence or courage to do it on their own. And I do that through my program that I will tell you a little bit about, about at the end of this. Um, and now I want, uh, I would like Nina to uh, introduce herself and share a little bit about, you know, why she started the expat women community. Sure. Thank you so much, Patricia, for having me on the show. And, you know, I, you won my show last week. So I, it's, I love it. I love this, uh, you know, this swap. And uh, so my name, yeah, my name is Nina Kaputi. I'm originally from India. And now I live in the San Francisco Bay area. And when I moved to the U.S., I really had a hard time of finding community and also just understanding how things work in a different country. Luckily, I grew up speaking English, so language wasn't a barrier. And I had traveled abroad. I had relatives who lived in the U.S. But, it, you know, all that doesn't matter. And I also, I, I think I mentioned last week with you, Patricia, I also met my husband, uh, you know, in the U.S. So I... I only initially was solo, but then I also had a partner, but he's, you know, from the U.S. And I think when you, when you're an immigrant, your spouse is already from the country, you know, maybe you're, you're trying to navigate the country alone. And, you know, or, I mean, he was very supportive and who I am today and what I do, a lot of the credit goes to him, but it was just not an easy journey. And I living in San Francisco, I assume there'd be a lot of like, you know, um, people from other countries and there'd be this network, but I couldn't find anyone because let me backtrack. I came to New York to study film. And when I was in New York, it was like a melting pot of cultures. I, the film school had, you know, people from different parts of the U S but also a lot of international students. And I lived at the Y and we were all kind of, you know, figuring out New York together, how to take the, uh, you know, the subway and use the coin operated laundry machines. So, you know, I had this little tribe and then I come here. And so I, I realized that I, this is when I had the aha moment when I was living in San Francisco after I got married. It was like, I need to start something. I'm feeling this pain. Uh, I'm having a hard time finding other people who've also moved abroad to help me navigate this journey together. It's hard to make friends with the locals. I mean, since then, I've made a lot of great American friends, but I need to start something. And my focus was really educated middle and higher income prof professionals because there were some nonprofits that were helping uh, immigrants who had, you know, who were, you know, maybe hadn't studied that much. And I hate to say that because people change, right? But I had already studied, so I, I didn't, I had a degree. I didn't qualify for those, some of those programs. I was looking for a, a professional job. And so I started the expat woman. Of course, I started it not immediately. It took me over 11 years to start it because in between I did other jobs and I also made a documentary film. Uh, but that's how the expat woman came about. Uh, was that your question? Yes, that was my question. <laughs> it sounds like, you know, this was something that you felt deep in your heart that you needed to start. And it didn't happen right away because you were, you know, occupied with work. Um, was there any was there any hesitation just because, well, you were doing something that you'd never done and probably had never been done um, in your area? Great question. Uh, I, You know, I think when we move to another country and we step out of our comfort zone, like you, I know your story and I'm sure many of your viewers know, right? It pushes you to do things you would never have even dreamt of doing before. Like I have a, actually a background in uh, 
um, you know, biotechnology, zoology, and then I studied film. I never dreamt I'd be an entrepreneur and, you know, working with women, empowering women. Though my mom, when I was growing up, my mom always said, you know, all your friends come to you and uh, share these secrets, not secrets, but when they've had breakups or that, you know, all there was, you should be a psychologist, a psychiatrist. So maybe deep down, that was what I was meant to be. But you know, in India, there's a lot of focus on you being a doctor or engineer. I come from a family of engineers, my uncles, my dad, my brother, they're all engineers. So my dad was like, you do engineering or you do medicine. <laughs> so I grew up with that you know, that I have to do either engineering or medicine. I didn't do either because I didn't want to be an engineer or doctor. So I did science. So there was all, you know, also how your culture plays a role in this. So entrepreneurship was the furthest thing from my mind. Uh, so, but I think all the experiences I had in the U.S., including finding a job, putting myself out there, finding community. Then I made a documentary film about gender violence in India. And that's like running your own business because I had to find funding. I had to find a producer, I had to find a crew, I had to then promote the film, find, you know, so all that, I think, gave me that, uh, I, maybe courage and confidence to just do it. And so I, I just had this dream, I want to do the expat woman, it'll be an online resource. And when I was done with the documentary, because that took many years of our life, my husband's a filmmaker too, and I was like, it's my birthday. I've had this dream to start this community for international women and initially was focused on expat women in San Francisco. I'm just going to go ahead and do it. And uh, so I just went ahead and did it. I didn't have a plan. I didn't have a business plan, a strategy or anything. I just chose the name and I created the website. Yes. And I'm so glad. And I know so many other women are glad that you did because uh, what you have created is simply incredible. I, I like how you say when you move abroad, when you become an expat, you find yourself doing things you never thought you would do. It really somehow works on, you know, expanding your comfort zone um, and, do, and doing things that were out of the realm of your comfort before. So thank you so much for sharing that. Um, we've had we've had quite a few people join. There's Linda Houston from the DMV. Um, hi, Linda. It was so nice to meet you last week um, in Richmond. She came to my meetup, so oh, wow. got to meet her in person. And hi, Katrina it's from um, Alabama. And Nat Flau 13 is also from the DMV. So you guys are here to find out how you can leverage LinkedIn to help you if you are already living abroad and are looking for opportunities, or if you are planning to move abroad and want to look for opportunities or create a business and leverage LinkedIn to help you do that. And so Nina is a pro at that. I, I am not very skilled with LinkedIn, but she's gonna share with us five tips or ways we can use LinkedIn to help us with that. So. Nina, what is tip number one? Okay, so tip number one, and I have to give a little bit of a backstory. I'll try to keep it very short because, again, I didn't plan to be a LinkedIn coach and trainer, but because I moved to the U.S. and San Francisco with almost zero professional network, and while I was working at an organization before I started the expat woman that helped immigrant professionals get jobs in the U.S., uh, one of the uh, job seekers we were working from, I think he was from Eastern Europe. He said, hey, guys, have you heard of LinkedIn? I joined it and I have like 500 connections, mostly in the U.S. And, you know, I was like, wow, he's, you know, he's new to the country and he's connected with 500 people. And you know how hard it is, it's especially, uh, you know, with meeting professionals. Sometimes it might be easy me meeting people, you know, uh, in more like social uh, setups, but just, you know, connecting with people. And at that time, you know, the San Francisco Bay Area was the was the hub for startups and big tech companies. And uh, so I joined LinkedIn. And then I was like, wow, I didn't go to school with these people. I didn't, you know, I um, have never met them. And I'm making all these connections. And at once it helped me with feeling like more, uh, you know, that I was kind of creating this uh, community for myself in the U.S., and kind of I also use LinkedIn when I started the expat woman to promote the expat woman events, to find speakers, to find sponsors, to get guests to attend my events. So it kind of between that and, you know, starting uh, using LinkedIn to promote my business, 
and build my networks made me realize the power of this platform, especially for women who have moved abroad. So my first tip well, is- well, well, I want to stop you there. So you said, when, what, what year was this? Because I know LinkedIn has evolved in, and really grown. Absolutely. Yeah. So LinkedIn was founded in 2002 in Silicon Valley, which is really in my backyard. I moved to the US in 2002, but I only heard about it in 2007 because yeah. that's when I was working at this nonprofit organization and I jumped on LinkedIn. Then yes, it has evolved tremendously. At that, when I first joined, it was really more for job seekers. You know, we, we would just copy and paste our resume and I would just, you know, just blindly connect with people because I want to get to that 500, like the guy I was helping. Uh, I mean, I did also use it a little strategically because part of my job at this nonprofit, it's called Upwardly Global, was to connect these uh, immigrant professional job seekers with mentors and companies who could do mock interviews with them because, as you know, different countries have different processes when looking for a job and you know you might have an interview in france i'm sure the way they interview or maybe the resume is different from the us and different from india right so not only are you struggling with navigating this new country or city but like how do i look for a job how do i not stand out as this foreigner you know and you know there there is unconscious bias i mean people are like oh we're focused on diversity equity inclusion we hire you know minorities but Again, there is that bias, especially if you're not doing it right. So I use LinkedIn to find all these people who would do mock interviews with the job seekers. So yeah, 2007. But as you said, uh, Patricia, it has evolved. It's no longer this platform for what I'd like to say, men in suits, dudes in suits. You know, that's what we thought about. <laughs> dudes you know, in this, suits. <laughs> yeah. You know, this really stuffy, serious, very professional uh, platform, which scares most people, especially many immigrant professionals, expats on this might be scared of it, like, oh my gosh, I don't belong in this platform. But the beauty that has evolved so much, it's 2024 and LinkedIn is encouraging people to really show up authentically. You do not have to be a dude in a suit. You can be, uh, you know, and who you really are, who you genuinely are. So my first tip would be, be strategic about why you want to use this platform. What do you want to get on this platform? Whether you're moving abroad, you're currently living abroad, uh, and you know you haven't used the platform yet or you've just signed up like i had initially done and you know not really used it initially for much so uh think about what is my purpose on the platform am i joining because i i'm moving abroad or i live abroad and i want to start sh sharing my voice so i'm not just seen as this this foreigner or this immigrant or this expat or digital nomad or this partner spouse or someone but as naina kaputi uh, the CEO and founder of the expert woman or the LinkedIn coach or, you know, Patricia Brooks with, and all the amazing things you do. You're an author. You have your accelerator. You have this amazing YouTube show. So think about that. Maybe. And I know that's not easy. Sometimes you have, you know, you're moving abroad because you're trying to re, uh, you know, you're trying to find yourself and what your purpose is or you moved abroad and maybe you're not sure what you want to be known for. So it doesn't even have to be professional. It can just be like I'm joining LinkedIn because I want to connect with other people uh, say you're moving to France or you live in France. I want to connect with other women who live in France. Maybe you worked in product management or maybe, you, you know, you're in the DMV because I see some women from the DMV. Maybe you do some specific role and you're moving to another country. Are there women who also work in that field? So think about that's your first goal. What is my strategy? Don't treat it like you're throwing spaghetti at the wall, just going to do something because we all have limited time. And many people say, oh, LinkedIn doesn't work, but it, they don't have a strategy in place. So because if you have something clear on it, as I said, can be very simple. It can change over time. It can pivot. Uh, LinkedIn is also focused on helping international women. So do, should I go to my second tip, uh, Patricia? Or uh, have... Well, so you talk about that. Yes, go to your second tip. No, no, ask then... questions. Go ahead and ask me what the question you had, because the second tip is a little different. So, go well, ahead. so you know, you say be strategic about it. And sometimes it's hard to figure out what your strategy is. How would you recommend, like, so is there, how would you recommend somebody creating a, str a strategy? Is there an end end goal in, in, in that creating that strategy? I mean, how will they know if their, their strategy is working? Great question. So I would say just, you know, you're, whenever we join a platform, there's a reason we joined, right? Maybe you join Instagram because you want to showcase the beauty of the country you've moved to or the dishes you cook or, you know, your kids. 
Uh, so again, think about why am I joining LinkedIn? LinkedIn is a 24-7 networking platform for professionals. It is the largest platform for professionals. And again, when I say professionals, not dudes and suits, anyone. I, we also have people who are actors and authors and you know creators. There are women who are in between jobs. So just think about, there must be a reason you're joining the platform. Maybe you're just joining this because you're curious and you want to check it out. Maybe you're just starting with that, right? I want to check out the platform, but you need to have something in mind. I'm checking it out. I'm going to give myself time. I'm going to give myself grace. It's going to take me a while. I'm not sure why I'm joining it, what my end goals are, but I'm going to join the platform. And then, you know, hopefully everyone watching this is going, going to listen to the next few tips. So then, you you know, we can walk you through once you join the platform. But I think you have, for those of you who are more clear and have some clarity, you know, and you know it's a professional platform, uh, you know, for people between jobs, anyone who's looking, it's not so much focused on, as I said, like Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest are more like lifestyle brands. You can be, you can, it, there is a certain amount of lifestyle, but you don't every day post photographs of yourself eating food, unless you have a business that, you know, makes food or flavors food, or you have a food blog. So that's what I mean by, you know, like deciding what, what do you want to use it for? And again, don't, I would say, just do it, just put yourself out there and we'll go through the other strategies. So you can have a very simple goal of I'm just testing out the platform. I know uh, that this is going to help me. So I'm just going to create my profile. And then I'm going to listen to the other four tips that Nina shares and Patricia mm -hmm. interviews her on and then see what the next steps are. Does that answer your question, Patricia? Yeah, yeah I think it does. I, it doesn't have to be complex. It doesn't have to be. You just need to know why you're there so that you um, are motivated to to go and check it out, to you know, post to do whatever um, you feel you need to do to make that strategy work for you. Absolutely. And I'll show yeah. the, the four pillars uh, that, you know, as we move forward, but you, 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 you kind of summarize it really well, uh, Patricia. And I, I've been encouraging women to show up on LinkedIn because I, I've used all the platforms and I, and you know, you, you're doing amazing work on YouTube. Not everyone initially might be comfortable showing up on video, you know, on, on YouTube. So LinkedIn, you can kind of show up in a, you know, very uh, quietly or stealthily and then slowly build your voice, uh, share your voice. You know, if you had told me, Naina, like before the pandemic, Naina, you're going to be live on YouTube and LinkedIn lives and, you know, Facebook. I would be no way. I was, I'm a very shy person. This confidence that you see today has, is, has come with four years. Thanks to the pandemic of me pushing myself to show up on video. Yeah. My legs used to be so shaky. And even now I feel like a little nervous. What if my brain freezes, right? But the, I'd say my confidence has really come from showing up initially on other social media platforms. And then I kind of moved to LinkedIn because I realized that's where my audience was. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So, yeah. Go ahead, Patricia. So, yeah. So that is wonderful. And congratulations on, you know, putting yourself out there, you know, because it's hard. It is hard. You You would not know it unless you you shared that with us. Right. You, um, and if you guys have questions, please feel free to type them in the chat and we will entertain them. So do you want to go ahead and share tip number two? Sure. And no question is silly because if you uh, if you ask me about Instagram, like if I, I have no idea how Instagram works, there I'm just throwing spaghetti on the wall. So, you know, so I know the same thing with LinkedIn. So no question simple. So I'd say the second tip is really your LinkedIn profile. And again, I want to tell people this is a work in progress. But of all the social media profiles, LinkedIn, the LinkedIn profile gives you so many opportunities to talk about yourself because now one LinkedIn is searchable by Google, by Bing. So when people enter your name in a search, one of the first things that will show up, or at least on the first page or second page of LinkedIn is your LinkedIn profile. So, you know, if you're like me, when I meet someone, I hear about sometimes someone, I, I usually Google their name or someone wants to, you know, invite me to speak. I Like Patricia, I'm not sure how I found you, but say you invited me to speak on your show. I would Google you and see, let me learn all about Patricia and see if I want to be on her show, vice versa, if you want to invite someone to be on your show, right? Yes. So, yeah, so the LinkedIn profile shows up and there are many sections in LinkedIn. How can they, it help you when you're moving abroad? You could 
some of the things you could include are if you worked abroad, but now you know you're moving abroad and you're you're either moving, you're taking a sabbatical. You can put your past experience in your in your LinkedIn profile. LinkedIn also allows you to put a career break in your profile. And this is where I know LinkedIn is supporting international women or, you know, just expats, anyone moving abroad, not just women. Because in your career break, one of the drop down uh, options is relocation. Because we all went for many people who, are, who relocate or move abroad without it's not because you're moving because of your company. Maybe you're moving because I know Patricia's story. She decided to take a sabbatical and move abroad and check it out, which I think is a really smart strategy. Or maybe you have to move because your partner or spouse is moving and you, can, you can't work immediately. You can put relocation in your, in your profile. Uh, you can put the languages you speak. So that's another way to showcase that I'm, multi, I'm a multilingual person because with the world getting more globalized and jobs being remote, you know, showing how international you are add so much value to you. And, you know, initially, I remember when I was working at this nonprofit with immigrant professionals, people didn't want to show that they live in another country because they felt there'd be discrimination. But I think it, if a company doesn't hire you because, you know, you like for some of us, I know people don't like Americans, you know, <laughs> I've experienced that when I've gone, like, like, you know, they have this thing that, oh, we are, and I'm Indian, but I've lived in the US 20 years, I have American passport. So I'm, you know, people see that. I'm just saying, you know, this unconscious bias. So those, you don't want to work for companies like that. You want to work for companies like, wow, she's from the US or wow, she's from Morocco or she's from Nigeria, wherever, right? We, we welcome this diversity. So that's, and then the, the other thing that LinkedIn has on their profile is, Called the I don't most people don't know about this feature. It's called the name pronunciation feature. Mm -hmm. So if you go to your profile <clears throat> under your headline, you have to. So one thing I want to backtrack is you need to download your the LinkedIn app on your phone. This is very important. This I'm just throwing in this extra tip. It's not one of my five tips, but as someone who's mobile, moving from one country to another, you're taking traveling by, you know, you're you're at the airport. Maybe it takes a while to get your internet connection set up so you can't use your laptop or desktop. Your phone is your window into the LinkedIn world. So you can record your name pronunciation on your phone. So you go to the LinkedIn app on your phone. And when you, you know, there's something called the edit profile. So you would scroll down and it, there, there's you will see this little thing saying record your name. So you can record. Now you have 10 seconds. So you can record your first and last name now. But Patricia, your name is pretty phonetic and easy to pronounce. I don't know if you, has your name ever been mispronounced? Have you ever experienced? Well, here in France, they they call me P Patricia Brooke. They drop oh, the yeah. S. <laughs> oh, I mean that, yeah. So that, you know, so then even for you, I didn't think about that because you know, yeah. But you're right because sometimes names are pronounced differently. So you would record your name and say, "Hey, I'm Patricia Brooks." And because you have 10 seconds, you can also add something else. I'm Patricia Brooks. I'm originally from the U.S. and now I live in France and I run this accelerator program. Do you want to connect with me? It could be anything. You don't have a, you're not working right now. You can say, hey, I'm looking to connect with other people have, who have moved to this country. But having your first and last name pronunciation, you know, helps people when they want to connect with you, listen to them, that. Because so many people call me Nina, right? So, and I don't blame people because my name is not very common. So I say, hey, I'm Nina Kapudi. I'm a LinkedIn coach and consultant and also the founder and of the expat woman. I'd love to kind of co connect with you. If this sounds of interest to you. You know, I don't remember exactly what I say because I keep changing it. But that's something you can add to your profile, right? Or you can say, I'm like looking, that. yeah, I, I, it's such a powerful tool. And that just shows you again how LinkedIn is, you know, recognizing that we are from many countries, how diverse we are. We might have moved to another country, have a foreign sounding name or name that can be mispronounced like yours, right, in that country. So that's another thing I would add. If you understand what your purpose and goals are on LinkedIn, maybe you already know it, or maybe it takes a while. You want to make sure you showcase that across your profile. Uh, you know, for me, I have two businesses, the expat woman, foundancy of the expat woman, and then I'm also a LinkedIn coach and consultant. So below your photograph, you have 220 characters to add this headline. And I encourage people to go look at my profile. I think, Patricia, even you have all your stuff in your, 
on your profile, right? I know you said you don't. I know hope so. <laughs> well, maybe look check mine out, then maybe compare it with Trisha. I, I think you you have. Anyway, go to my profile and see how I have the, my headline. Uh, you know what I say in my headline. Uh, you don't want to just put a job title. Now maybe you move to this country or you're going to move and you're looking for a job. And maybe in the country you live in, the job title is very different from the job title in the country you're moving to, right? We know how job titles are different. So make sure you find out what that job title is in the country you're moving to, because if you want to work in that country and you have a title that they have no idea what to do. And in the U.S., uh, and this is not a U.S. bashing thing. I love the U.S. I mean, this is where I created the expat woman. This is the U.S. is really where I found myself. So. Uh, you know, maybe one day I'll move to France because Patricia has made it sound so amazing. <laughs> but, you know, like say you sometimes I've, I'm, and maybe other countries have these fluffy titles, but sometimes I've seen some very fluffy titles, you know, and if you it's, only the company might know what it is, maybe it'll be the product whisperer. You know, what what is that? You know, maybe you're this product manager, or this product developer, but you have to see what what is that title in that country. So that's another tip I would add. Uh, and then, you know, your experience section. Well, let me stop you there. So that what, so what's the tip there? So job titles differ from country to make country. Make sure you use the right, maybe make sure you don't use the fluffy titles when okay. you're using the headline. Say, I'm a product manager that helps companies uh, create innovative and, uh, you know, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just throwing a yes. product manager. I have no yes. idea what they do. But you get what I'm saying? Yes. You yes. use that. You use that in the in the title in your about section because recruiters search for of people with job titles. So yes. if you're looking for a job, you want to make sure you so, show up because LinkedIn's a search engine too, right? Besides Google, you so you can show up in both Google searches and LinkedIn searches by recruiters. If you have your own business, you want to be able to share what your business is. You might give your business name like a very fans, fancy name, but uh, or you know your title for your title at your business, but you want to explain what you do. So that's why I said once you know your goals, especially if it, now if you're talking from a pro professional job aspect, whether it's an entrepreneur or someone who wants to work for a company, you want to say who you are, what you do, who you help, and how you help them. So this should be in your LinkedIn headline, in your about section, uh, in the content you create, and again this. This happens over a period of time. You might not know it clearly because the LinkedIn profile is not about you. It's about how can you help people or why would pe why should people connect with you, right? It's that's a, it's not your resume. It's a resource. Mm -hmm. It's it's enticing people to want to say, hey, I want to really learn more about Nina. Maybe I I want to join the expat woman or maybe I want to hire her as a LinkedIn coach or trainer or the, with Patricia. Maybe I want to join her accelerator. But you're not saying buy my accelerator program. You're telling them what the transformation is, what solution, what is the problem your client or your employer, potential employer facing and how you can help them solve that problem. Yes, that's that's really good. It's not about you. It's about what you can do or how you can help. Uh, the person who's looking at you exactly yeah, one I like last thing, yeah i just one last thing i want to add is don't write your about section in the third person don't say naina kaputi is a founder and see of the expat woman no you write it in the first person because again linkedin is about having a conversation so you write like uh you know are you struggling with finding community abroad you know do you are you looking uh to feel more empowered unlock your potential you know then you can say i'm naina kaputi blah 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 so and also start, so you talk, you write it like you're talking to the person. Maybe yes. start with like a question or like, or you can say, I just moved to this country and I'm still trying to figure out my way. Okay, so anyone else who's also, you know, feeling the same way will say, hey, I want to connect with her because maybe you haven't, you don't even have a goal right now, but you don't say, Naina Kaputi just moved to the US and she's feeling very lost and struggling with navigating, right? That's, uh, it's, so yeah, so that's another tip I wanted to share. Okay, great, great. We've got a couple of questions, and I'm not sure if your your next three tips are going to tackle them or not. So I'm going to put them on the screen, and if you want to punt them until um, you get to that, your my glasses on. I'm so bad. <laughs> yeah, so I turn them off because I look at these lights. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> We're like all flashing. <laughs> Is there anything I can do to push my LinkedIn profile to international recruiters? Okay, I'll take off my glasses because it's distracting me. So. 
Yeah, so I, I will come to that. Uh, okay. So we finished, I spoke about profile. So let's talk about, as, since we want to address this question, let's talk about the next two tips or pillars of LinkedIn. Okay. It's your content and your network, okay? So you want international recruiters to find you. So that's a very important that your about section, you, you, your international recruiters are your target audience for the person who just asked the question, right? So when you write your profile, it has to be geared towards these people. Don't write the profile for yourself, right? And if this international recruiter is looking for me, what? why would they want to connect with me? Why would they want to hire, hire you? So that's where your profile comes in. In terms of your them noticing you, you there's 1 billion people on LinkedIn, but only three, around 3% are actually posting content and engaging in comments. So there are two things you can do here. Find those international recruiters that you want to work with. Find the companies that you want to work with where these international recruiters work and then connect with them. Before you connect, another tip I would add is uh, see if they're posting content. Okay, so look look on their, both on their company page. So LinkedIn has company page. Say you want to work for Google, right? Maybe Google has an office in the country you live at and then you look at who's working in Google France. I don't know if that's a Google France, but that's just as an example, right? So then you see who's working in Google France. Oh, so-and-so is working in Google France. So is she posting content? If she's posting content, you com start commenting and don't just say great post. Just add something of value. Say, you know, maybe you don't know what to add, but you, so maybe you can take a sentence from what this person says and say, this really resonated with, with me. You know, thank you for sharing and tag that person or you can leave like you can ask a question. So that's one thing you comment. After you comment, maybe two or three times, then reach out to the person and say, I'd like to con connect. I really like the content you share. Now, maybe they're not posting a lot of content. Maybe you read their profile and you're like, wow, this, you know, I, the profile really is interesting. So find something in their profile, you know, maybe the company they worked at, but do not write to the person, say, I want to connect because I want you to hire me. Or can you find me a job? Never do that. You know, I'm sure, and Patricia, I'm sure you've experienced this too. You connect with someone and the next minute they're trying to sell you some services, right? We, what I, we call that in the LinkedIn world is a pitch slap. So, you know, you accept, <laughs> you accept the connection request and then they're like, oh, we, can we get on a 15-minute call? I can help you make, you know, one million in one year or I can help you get hired by blah, blah, blah. These You don't even know who's this person, right? What and I, sometimes I'm guilty of that, but I'm so strategic with who I connect with, mm -hmm. and my profile is so well flushed out. So I don't always send a message because I feel people go to my profile and they'll know yeah. if there's enough information them for them to know why mm -hmm. I'm connecting with them. And that's why I say the profile is so important. But yeah. I, those are the tips. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, and I think that that's really good because I've had people, um, you know, comment. And then I'm curious, or, at, or even ask to be, a, a, you know, a connection. And then I'm curious because of their headline, right? Oh, well, they're, you know, doing something similar or something that's, you know, related. And then I go to their profile and, and check them out. So I think that that's a, a really, um, that's a really smart thing to do. Right, right. And people are so tired, especially recruiters of people just like reaching out to them, you know, asking them for jobs. So you want to get noticed by the recruiters. So those are some strategies. Go to the company page, see what the company is posting and comment on that company. Again, I shared the strategies earlier on how you can comment, follow the company. You know, maybe the company just got acquired or they made, they shared their, their sales for the year or something. You can just say congratulations, you know. Uh, so if you want to be noticed by both the recruiter and the company, and then you want to start creating content. You know, again, let's go back to product manager. Um, you want to be seen as this product manager start sharing stuff, the expertise, you know. And again, I just want you all to remember we are all experts. And for those who have moved abroad or planning to move abroad, you have that additional experience of working or living in another country. And, you know, Patricia and I mentioned in the beginning about being resilient because you move abroad, stepping out of your comfort zone. Those are skills that you can't be acquired overnight. Only international women, immigrants, expats have those skills, right? Because as we both, Patricia and I have both said, we've kind of found a, our purpose after we moved abroad, we were. I was working in a in a in a 
career that I didn't really enjoy. And I, I don't know about you, but I know you were in a different career, Patricia. But yeah, you know what yeah, I mean, yeah. right? That yeah. was right. That was me too. I, I fell out of love with my career. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. So I would say start creating content. Maybe initially, like, I don't know what to, this is pillar number four. I don't know what to create, uh, you know, what kind of content to create. Maybe initially just start curating content. Look, you know, LinkedIn is a search engine, right? So if you go to the search bar on the homepage of LinkedIn, you can enter. Let's go back to product manager, enter product manager. Then it'll pull up people, posts, companies. So you can look up people to connect with. Then you can look up, uh, you know, posts written about product management. And then you could share the a post. Maybe there's a post that really stands out about project management. And then you can add a few of your, uh, you know, maybe add it. Don't just repost. There's two options when you want to repost someone's post. It says repost or repost with your thoughts. You want to repost with your thoughts. You want to get noticed, you know, by people like, wow, you know, this person is like, you know, knows their stuff. And they're also sharing content from other people. If you can create your own content, that's even better. Another strategy for creating content would be doing a LinkedIn polls. P-O-L-L-S. I know when I pronounce it, sometimes people don't know what I'm saying. So it, it's so you can say say uh patricia because you i know one of the things you do is working with single <clears throat> women who want to move abroad confidently and su sustainably right so you could do a poll saying um are you uh, are you single you know or you could do a poll saying i want to move abroad but i'm afraid you know so something to get a sense of what are the challenges your audience is facing so one is it helps you get people engaged you know because I did a poll recently because after we actually we had our conversation I had a conversation with a few other women about moving abroad solo because last week you my podcast my uh, LinkedIn live uh, chat with you was about moving abroad as a single woman so I actually did a poll saying what age were you when you moved abroad solo or how many of you have moved abroad solo I'm not then you can say yes no uh, you know so people are engaging in the poll mm -hmm. you can then turn that poll into a into a post because you can say uh, you know i did this poll on this and then uh, you because you get the results right you can run it for a week or two weeks and this many people women said they have moved abroad uh, as a single women you know and then you can add one or two things to it so that just by doing a poll you're also you're doing research for yourself understanding who your audience is but you're also creating content to share with people right mm -hmm. so that, that so those are strategies uh, that I would uh, say uh, you can do to create content. You can also share, you know, personal stuff. I wouldn't say every week, but people buy from people. People hire people, right? Uh, so you can even maybe you did something interesting. Like I know there was one woman I was working with and she, I think she did, like she did dirt, dirt bike or dirt, I don't know. She drove on dirt, like I don't know, jeep <laughs> or a bike or something. But, you know, she worked at a recruiting agency and I just, I'm, she's a mom, a single mom. That's all I knew her as. And then she told me she does this. I'm like, you should post this because, you know, that adds a new element to you. It's like, how cool. Like, I'm a recruiter by day, but weekends I do this, right? So it's fine to, you know, share that. And the final tip I would say for this content part is be authentic. You know, mm -hmm. do not be afraid to use your voice. Because you're, and, and do not worry if no one comments. There's only 3% of people active on LinkedIn. Most people are lurkers. They just read your content, but they don't post. I've had so many people say, oh, Nain, I love what you shared. But I was like, I never saw you commenting on my posts or liking them. So I'm happy to know that people are reading it. So, and don't delete your posts. And don't worry about, you know, being judged, about making a fool of yourself. Uh, this is my one of my favorite quotes. It's by Nelson Mandela. He says, I never lose. I either win or I learn. And that's what your journey on LinkedIn should be. It should be a learning platform, like what's working, what's not. Don't beat yourself up. Don't, you know, self-sabotage or, you know, have self-limiting beliefs when you want to put yourself out there on LinkedIn. We are our worst critics. No one else is going to care as much as we care. So just follow the Nike slogan, just do it and just start doing it. So that's yeah. Do you want to take another question or you want to ask me something before I go? Yeah, to yeah. Katrina has a question. I'll post it. Uh, I plan to start an e-zine in English about made in France artisans and products for uh, income stream. 
I'm also a copywriter. I want to put my e-zine on LinkedIn, but feel since LinkedIn um, is more biz, I should put my writing. Uh, great question, Katrina. And I no, LinkedIn is uh, is actually focused on creators. You know, uh, they are encouraging people to be cre creators, and you can you can. I've seen actors. I've seen people have products. You know, you showing up on LinkedIn. So focus on you know if if you want to showcase your it sounds amazing made in france about artisan products i mean you can do so much with that i'm actually going to go into my fifth tip which will tie into what you just said so linkedin la two years ago uh, launched something called the creator mode which was really for people like you for patricia me who like to create stuff who like to showcase uh women in our network or like you with the artisans so you can you can do what Patricia and I are right doing can can also be streamed on LinkedIn. It's a LinkedIn live. So you could, you know, maybe you could showcase your artisans once a week or once a month. The only thing you have to do is get a third party tool like StreamYard or Restream. But you can start showcasing artisans on, on LinkedIn. The LinkedIn also with this creator mode and LinkedIn also lets you, lets you create a LinkedIn newsletter which can be once a week, once a fortnight, I think daily, once a month. So you could start creating a LinkedIn newsletter. That one, the first time you create it, everyone in your network, anyone who's connected with you on LinkedIn will receive uh, an email saying, because remember when people join LinkedIn, they join with an email saying that uh, Katrina has launched her easy made in France. I love the name made in France. Uh, you know, would you like to subscribe to it? And then if it's say weekly or monthly, you could showcase the stuff that you just spoke about. So you can do a newsletter. And the third thing is there's uh, another platform called LinkedIn Audio Events. I'm not sure if you know what Clubhouse is. When the pandemic first started, there was this audio platform. Like right now, Patricia, I mean, you can see us, you can, uh, you know, but you can't join us, right? You're commenting. The same thing with audio. It's free. You don't need a third party platform. You just have to create the LinkedIn audio on your on on LinkedIn, and then you can either you can talk about it or you can bring on a guest. And the, the only disadvantage is you can't record it, but such a powerful way to reach people. So whatever your business or is whatever you want to showcase LinkedIn, so long as it's not political, religious, or offensive, or you know, sexual, LinkedIn is a fair game. I've seen all kinds of people uh, showcasing stuff. I've even seen people share very personal stories like losing a child, losing a spouse, going through a divorce, you know, caring for an age, aged parent and just kind of try it. And, and you already have clarity on what you want to do. So LinkedIn is your oyster or your platform to go ahead and start showcasing. As I said, they are, they are encouraging people to be creators. And that's what I love about the platform. It was, if it was a the old platform, it wouldn't have been so much fun. I have so much fun on the platform. I went for a tea party uh, two days ago with a hat, like a British tea party. And, you know, I posted about it because the woman that hosted it was is raising money for a nonprofit that, that works with children of sex workers in India. And they educate the girls. So she was doing it for that. So I was able to spotlight her and the nonprofit and, of course, show, my, show myself off in a hat. Uh, you know, I'm sipping tea. <laughs> so, you know, and, you know, use LinkedIn as a platform to spotlight women and empower women, which is what I do. And both, you know, the woman who is running the fundraiser is originally from India. So she's an expat woman. So, you know, you, you can do anything. And it got a lot of engagement. Use photographs of yourself when you can or photo photographs of other people's stock footage doesn't do so well. And when you have the courage and confidence, record a short video and just do you know, introduce yourself on LinkedIn. For anyone watching this, actually, the, I'll add this pro tip. You have people in your network, they might have forgotten who you are. So do a, like either post with a photograph of you or a short video saying, hey, you know, I just want to thank everyone who's in my network. This is me. This is what I do. This is where I live. Okay. And don't worry about, you know, oh, like uh, no one's going to comment or someone's going to uh, like, you know, uh, LinkedIn's very strict about people spamming you. Or harassing you you can complain to them and also the the final thing why linkedin so good is because they verify your your profile so if you are not who you are linkedin might take your profile down on instagram facebook you see all kinds of crazy names you don't know if those people are real or not or you'll see that the the, the their profile is a flower or a dog 
here it's it's actually legal to use a logo or your or a animal or an object as your linkedin profile photo you have to have your your image and linkedin will track those people down and remove them so that's one more thing it's very safe it's a safe platform i mean i'm not saying that won't be times when something might happen but i've not had a, a much issues with it and i you know i go as I, patricia said we go to people's profiles and we know if they're real or they're bots or ai or whatever robots etc yeah Nina, I have a follow on question to Katrina's question. So she's got the copywriting and the easing that she's working on. Um, so would she have two different profiles? No. Good. Great question. You cannot have two profiles on LinkedIn. That's illegal, too. They can shut you down. Like I said, I have two businesses, right? I have the expat woman and I have the LinkedIn coaching. So I, uh, I am. I, it depends on where you are on your journey. So right now, I, I share both of them. For a while, I was mainly focusing on the LinkedIn coaching because I became a coach in the last few years. But uh, now, I've, I've, like, because I'm doing the Expat Woman Summit, I'm showcasing both my businesses in my headline. So I say I'm the founder and CEO of the Expat Woman, empowering women, you know, to unlock their potential abroad. And I'm also a LinkedIn coach and consult and trainer. And I help, you know, entrepreneurs, expats, uh, leverage LinkedIn to showcase their expertise. So I'm sharing both those. So Katrina or anyone listening, if you have more than one stream of income or more than one interest, you can decide, do I want to use LinkedIn for both of these or do I want to use them for one? The other thing you can do is you can create two LinkedIn pages. So in your experience section, you know how when you work for a business, you link your experience to that business, but you can also, you don't, do, do not need to own like a, or uh, LLC or established business. You can even create a page for Katrina, uh, you know, for your e-sign and then another one for, you know, your copywriting. You can have, maybe your copywriting could be your name and then Made in France could be another page. So you can create two LinkedIn pages and then that, and then you can sh share more about that on your LinkedIn pages. So you just go to your, you know, if you go to someone's, go to my experience section on my profile. It's my first and last name. And you'll see I have my Naina Kapudi page and then I have the expat woman page. The Naina Kapudi is where I promote my LinkedIn coaching and training. And then the expat woman takes you to the expat woman page where it's, you know, I just focus only on the expat. So you can have several pages on LinkedIn and then you can showcase both of them in your headline, about section. Just make it clear. And if you decide this is more important than that one, then focus on that one. Maybe you have different seasons. Right now I'm pushing the Expat Women Summit. That's why I have that in my background where Patricia is going to be a speaker. So I do have that as in my about section, right? And I'm focusing on expat women or women who are planning to move abroad. So I've changed my about and my headline. And then maybe in a couple of months, I'm start doing a LinkedIn. I do a LinkedIn group coach, coaching bootcamp. So then I'm going to change everything to promote my boot camp. So also think about that. Like what, what am I wanting to showcase now? Who's my target audience? You can change it around, but just make sure pe people know that you do both these things. So they, because if people just saw me as a LinkedIn coach and then suddenly I talk about expat women, like what is she doing? Right. So kind of, you know, try and figure out how you're going to showcase both, but you can definitely do both on LinkedIn and uh, find those audiences. But I say create those separate pages. As All well. right. Thank you. And that's in the experience section that you do that. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. That's th thank you for for clear, um, clarifying that. Now, what's this expat women summit? <laughs> you tell me, Patricia. OK, so the expat women summit is a virtual event for anyone who's looking to move abroad, is already living abroad, is curious about what it's like to live abroad or has repatriated. Uh, it's a. Uh, this month, because it's Women's History Month and International Women's Day, and the theme is for International Women's Day is Inspire Inclusion, uh, I decided to use that same theme. So it's going to be, we're going to have three days. The first day is focused on finding belonging abroad. The second day is finding on a community abroad. And the third day is finding empowerment abroad. It runs from March 6th to March 8th. It's free. It's virtual. It's global. The, every day the, we have 20 speakers, including Patricia. And I'm, 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 I hope Patricia will then share what she, she's going to speak about at the summit. But it's uh, open, as I said, to everyone. All you need to do is register. Patricia, you can, since this is your audience, oh, yes. you can share the link in the chat and in the, on your YouTube channel. Uh, 
but yeah and if you you say oh i i'm not able to watch all the videos in 24 hours you can also upgrade it to a you know a ticket uh, a paid ticket which is called a vip ticket so you get ongoing access so you can watch the videos as often as you want you i've also put them on a podcast private podcast so this is for the paid ticket but the free ticket gives you access for 24 hours we have some virtual networking events we have an amazing community of women in the once you join the summit you'll also be uh, they'll uh, you'll get an email sharing our facebook group where a lot of the guests and speakers are hanging out and it's really this is my second summit the first one i hosted in november and the whole idea is really to bring together this international community and bring together expert uh, expats leaders and influencers like patricia who have this expertise to share on you know how you can be successful abroad in the end we want to be happy and successful abroad and success doesn't mean just monetary or having this huge house or car success is feeling like you you know you you are happy with where you live you feel fulfilled you're able to achieve whatever your goals are maybe you can't work but maybe you you want to make friends or maybe you want to learn how to you know navigate this country that is success right so the, that's the, the summit and i really encourage you all to attend uh, and spread the word as well and patricia maybe you can share uh, yeah your uh, what you are going to be speaking out about at the summit yes my topic is on how not to be an outsider abroad and i think that you know moving abroad especially alone is is an isolating experience. And so I, I tackle, you know, three buckets that you need to care for in order to integrate more um, seamlessly. Um, and some of the things that, that you can do even before you make that move abroad, if you haven't already moved, so that when you make your move abroad, it's easier for you to do that. And um, I'm really excited uh, to, to share that presentation. The other speakers um, are tr uh, tremendous also. I mean, they have a wealth of knowledge. Some of them have lived in many, many different countries. So they have they say have a depth of knowledge about it, so about their topic. So um, I encourage you, if you haven't already you know, gotten your ticket, go ahead. Um, I've put the, the link in the um, the YouTube video, so you can be able to click that. So if you go below in the description, you can click that and register. And I, I can't wait to see everybody there. Thank you, Patricia. Yeah, I, I hope I hope you will join us. All right. Um, are there other um, comments or questions that you would like to um, share? Uh, Katrina, thanks. Thanks you. <laughs> um, before we go, because we are going to wrap up uh, in a few minutes, ha let, let me ask this question of, of of viewers: Have you are you users of LinkedIn already? And what you know, what was what did you learn in listening to us today? Yeah. So, um, okay. So I just want to let me get this. <clears throat> I just want to say that um, I want to thank you so much for joining me, Nina. I um, also want to share that you know if if you are somebody who is considering, you know, making a move abroad, a single woman ready to make that next step, take that next step, but feel a little bit afraid to do it on your own, definitely schedule a uh, complimentary session with me. And um, I would be happy to to learn more about where you are, where you want to be, and uh, what your next steps are. My program is um, very robust in what it does. It's got a component of lessons that help you to work on your mindset because mindset is huge in making a move uh, abroad. Um, and then also shifting, you know, into the kind of person who sees themselves as the kind of person who moves abroad, because before you have that, it's hard It's hard to see yourself do that. And if it's hard for you to see yourself do that, it's hard for you to take that next step. And then that third component is all about, okay, let me put a plan in action. How do I close out my old life? How do I set up my new life um, so that I can, um, you know, start this, this, this new life abroad. Um, and it also has a group coaching and mentoring component that is, you know, it's, it's, just incredible. The women on the calls are so supportive and they ask so many 
good questions, and they have uh, a wealth of information as well. So that's the Carefree Expat Incubator Program. And if you're interested in that, um, you can schedule time with me at this link here. All right. Um, I don't see any any further questions, and I don't see any comments about people using LinkedIn or what they learned, um, but I certainly learned a lot about this. I think what I wanted to start doing is using the LinkedIn polls. That was something I wasn't uh, aware of. So, um, and I think it's really, it's a great way to do research, get engagement, because I think everybody likes to share their opinion. So, all right. All right, if there are no questions, we are gonna wrap up, okay? Nina, I wanna thank you so much for joining me today. Um, and I so look forward to this week um, and this summit. I, you know, We've been planning and working hard for the last couple of months on this and it's finally almost here. So um, I look so forward to that. Thank you so much, Patricia. Thanks for having me on the show. And thank you for everyone in the audience. And connect with me on LinkedIn. I share a lot of tips about how you can leverage LinkedIn. So you, I'm sure you'll find something of value there. I know it's a lot that I shared today, but hopefully you've taken one nugget that you can implement. Yes, yes. All right. Take care, everybody. Thanks for joining.